What's up everyone, China Cycling here at the Taipei Bike Show. Uh, we're going to go in, see what's new, see what there is to check out. No plan for today's video, just going to walk around and say what I see. Uh, no cameraman today, flying solo, so let's see how we get on. Let's go check it out. So this is the C1D wheel set from uh, a company called Black Tech, it looks like. Uh, no words on the weight. Uh, had a bit picked it up, didn't seem super, super light, but uh, looking at the size of these spokes, you're gonna end up with a very stiff wheel set. Uh, aerodynamically, looks like it wouldn't be too bad either, as the profile of these spokes does seem to be pretty aero, so. Uh, your bike would definitely look different. Uh, yeah, worth checking out. This also interesting, so uh, an aluminum spider and then stainless steel for the braking surface friction welded with a large surface area with no rivets. In theory means that the heat from the braking surface goes into the aluminium spider easier. And obviously that aluminium spider has a huge surface area, uh, which should enable a lot better cooling. Uh, we'll see what Peak Talk makes of this one. Sustainability and general green eco-friendliness has been a theme at this year's show it seems. And what shows that more than a wooden bike? Although cutting down trees, I'm sure it's that green, but very beautiful piece of art either way. <laughs> Kdex's Super Aero Tri Bike also here. Nice looking piece of kit in the flesh. You got a nice, lots of storage on this down tube. And obviously a lack of a top tube is probably keeping it pretty aero. These bars also seem super slick. Everything just integrated. If you've got an old rim brake bike that you want to upgrade to an e-bike, this looks like it could be one option. This switch kit uh, looks pretty slank swanky. This battery that clips onto the handlebars and sits out in front. Uh, and then obviously you little dial and your controller to see how much battery you've got what your speed is etc and then yeah just a, a front electric hub motor so turn your old rim brake bike into an e-bike with this little kit this ar01 from trigon has some interesting features uh, obviously i think trigon are a local brand but you've got these nice little aero shrouds on their front and rear disc calipers looks very clean Two profiles also looking pretty aero, but apparently remaining lightweight. The specifics of weight, I'm not sure, uh, but it's a very tidy looking piece of kit. These e-bikes keep getting bigger and heavier and more powerful. Apparently 1,500 watts in this thing, uh, which judging by the size of that motor, I can believe. Uh, but yeah, 1,500 watts. I kind of like this logo. This is the Root Oh La La. Here we have a brand called Ulak with a very cool looking range of uh, bike bags. Big fan of this color. I think it'll go well with the uh, G2. A huge cassette from KCNC. Looks like 12 speeds from nine to 52 teeth. So that's a huge, huge range from one cassette. And uh, funky colors as well. Also seems KCNC also getting in on the pulley cage action, a range of Rear pulley, lower pulley cages for a variety of different derailers. So over on the Maxxis stand, we have the High Road SL, their super light tire, proving that clincher isn't dead. Uh, the clincher version in a 700 by 25C weighs just 170 grams, super light. Combine it with some uh, TPU tires, some TPU inner tube, sorry, and you've got a super, super light setup. Uh, the 25 miller version now also has tubeless ready, but the tubeless ready one is 260 grams. So a huge penalty for going tubeless. So if you still like to ride with tubes and you want a light setup, Maxxis High Road SL in a 25 mil with a TPU inner tube, and you'll be under 200 grams for your outer tire and your tube. Here at the Trans X store, got these tiny, tiny, is it a bike, is it a scooter? You tell me, there's no pedals. But yeah, uh, e-transport and e-bikes, getting more and more popular, so why not start the kids young with a tiny little e-bike scooter? 
If you have a 12 inch wheel bike that you need to pimp out, Hubsmith have you covered with their range of 12 inch wheels for kids balance bikes. If you've got a Brompton and you think you've got too few gears on the back, then Hubsmith have you covered. Here they have their upgrade wheel set to put seven gears on the back of your Brompton. So it can take a standard Shimano seven speed cassette, upgrade your Brompton, give it more gears. On the subject of Bromptons, if you want a new wheel set for your Brompton, Hubsmith have their Bumby CC349 series. Not only is it carbon rim, but carbon spokes and ceramic bearings. So that's the rear wheel. And here we have the front wheel. You can see the carbon spokes going into the hub. Super lightweight wheel set for your Brompton. Obviously, everyone likes carbon, but an alloy bike frame every once in a while isn't bad, especially when it looks as good as this. This enduro bike from De Bomb. Uh, very cool brand, looking like they've got some very cool designs. I'm proving that alloy bikes aren't dead yet. Uh, a rim brake road bike group set you've probably never seen before from Sunrace. This is their RS series. Uh, I think more aimed at the affordable side of the market, but uh, another option on the rim brake road bike. They also have their own derailers and cassettes to go with it. But obviously with the bigger brands doing less and less rim brake group sets, uh, someone's got to pick up the slack. Here we have a brand I'm not familiar with called Vaxxers, but with some interesting products. So it looks like they have their own version of a carbon spoke. See on these Vaxxers, the VX50 SCD, their claimed weight for a pair of 50 mil wheels is 1,338 grams. So yeah, uh, not heard of them before, but it looks like they're up to doing some good stuff. This is Vaxxers' super lightweight wheel set with a super light hub. You can see this free hub body has been machined to death. But uh, this wheel set, 1,215 grams. So, a very light wheel set. There's lots of stands that the company you've never heard of, but inside it is absolutely packed with people. One such example is Velo. Now Velo, they make saddles uh, as a factory and OEM for so many of the brands out there. Uh, almost all of the saddles in the world are made by Velo. So. You've probably never heard of them, but you've probably used one of their saddles before, just with a different logo on it. As these bikes are getting heavier and heavier, especially these e-bikes, slowing them down is obviously becoming an issue. Uh, don't worry, TRP have your back. Along with Bosch, they've got their ABS series of brakes going on. Uh, four pot pistons on this thing, and absolutely huge disc rotors, as you can see. So, yeah, TRP slowing down even the heaviest of bikes. Again, after a full day looking at carbon frames, it's nice to see something else. A nice tidy titanium brand called Aura. So here at the Windspace stand, I like this stand because I don't have to ask anyone any questions. I already know everything about these. So this is the upcoming wheel set from Windspace or Learn called Mega. Uh, now everyone knows Hyper, but no one knows much about Mega these days. So what is Mega? So yeah, the main difference between uh, Hyper and Mega is with the spokes and the hub. So you have these, what they're calling the halo spokes, basically one side of the wheel, all of these spokes, it's basically one giant spoke. So inside the hub here, the spokes are joined, but also for example, this spoke here, the individual strands of carbon, they come all the way up here, through here, and then down here. So yeah, just an improvement in stiffness to weight over Hyper, and obviously Hyper already had pretty good stiffness to weight. Uh, so this is similar to what you see on like a lightweight wheel, I guess, where the hubs and the spokes are connected. But the difference here is that uh, these are not actually permanently connected. So obviously connected to the rim, you've got your traditional uh, spoke nipples as you do on the hypers. So here on the flange, you have these uh, bolts. Take out the bolts, you can take off the cover and then remove the spoke. So if you were to snap a spoke, which obviously anyone who's used hyper wheels will know, they hardly ever snap. But if you were to snap one, uh, you can replace the one side of the spokes without having to throw the whole wheel away or having to send it back to the manufacturer like you would on something like a lightweight. 
Uh, price is not confirmed yet, but I don't think it's going to be cheap. But it's not designed to be a wheel for everyone. It's, uh, if you want a great wheel, just get Hyper. But if you really want the cream of the crop and a little bit lighter, a little bit stiffer, then uh, yeah, Mega might be for you. On this side, in this little corner, we've got some of the frames. Uh, this is an interesting paint job for the SLC. I don't know if there's any love for this in the comments. Uh, this is a love it or hate it. So I designed this frame, but then when it came out, uh, I didn't like it, so it never went into production. But uh, I don't know, you guys tell me. Sometimes I look at it and I think it looks cool. Some days I look at it and I think, what was I thinking? So let me know in the comments down below if they should put this color into production. Uh, yeah. I think it looks kind of good today, but I'll see it tomorrow and I'll probably hate it, so that's that. Uh, the G2, we all know and love. Uh, the Ride Bikes Pro version of the T1500 that those guys are racing. And here, which maybe most people wouldn't know this, is actually the T1550, not the T1500. So this is the minor update to the T1500. So two main differences. Difference number one, uh, they've slightly changed the manufacturing method. So now it uses EPS, like internal molding. Uh, basically, long story short, you get a lighter, stiffer frame because the carbon gets compacted better. Uh, another difference is that it's gonna go to round steerer tubes. And uh, whereas the, the T1500 has a D-shaped steerer tube and the cables go at the front of the D-shaped, uh, the T1550 has a round-shaped steerer tube and then the cables all go down the front of the steerer tube. So that makes the head tube a little bit fatter, a little bit bigger, but that's the only external difference. So yeah, that's the T1550. It's been a long time coming. Uh, it's been being tested for a long time. Uh, lots of people secretly racing it around the world because yeah, from the outside, you can't really tell it's that much different. Another friend of the channel and coming to pandapodium.cc soon are Viac. These guys make some pretty interesting tools. So they've got these funky colored bar ends, but then inside the bar ends, there are two choices, uh, three choices, sorry. So you have uh, Allen keys. So you have this one, which is like your traditional set of Allen keys to get you back on the road. And then you have this one here, which is a chain breaker tool. So you can use the Allen keys to get that and get you back on the road. So go in your bar ends, super clean, super tidy, super funky. Uh, but useful and nice and lightweight too. And the third choose, choice is a dart tool. So if you're using tubeless, you've got a tubeless dart plug uh, to get yourself back on the road as well. And then all the other stuff, just some other fancy looking tools. But it's pretty cool. I like it when these Asian brands, they're not just trying to be you know, cheap. This is actually pretty stylish, good looking stuff. I like it. Okay, that's about it from day one here at the Taipei Bike Show. Covered about 30%, 40% of the show area. So yeah, come back tomorrow so you don't miss the rest. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe for more content like this. Uh, we'll see what we're gonna see tomorrow. Let me know in the comments down below what the best thing you saw today was. And uh, yeah, check back tomorrow for tomorrow's video. China Cycling, out.